Welcome to Midweek Message for Wednesday the 17th of April. My name is Linda. I'm a retired minister and long-term friend of St Anne's. And it's good to share with you the next in our series of talks called Exploring Easter. But just before I bring the Bible reading to you, a cautionary tale. Sometimes... The unexpected happens. A few years back, I was on my friend Maggie's narrowboat and she was trusting me to steer while she went to get something from her cabin. And you can imagine my expression when, as I went under a bridge at an angle where the road crossed the canal, the canal turned right And there in front of me, right across the whole width of the canal, was a boat. It looked as if somebody had undone one of the mooring ropes and it had swung round to totally block the whole way through. Fortunately, Maggie heard my shout for help and came to try and sort the situation out. But it taught me we never know what's round the corner. Sometimes the unexpected happens. And I guess that was true for the two friends that we're going to hear about in our Bible reading. Their story is found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, beginning at verse 13. Now, on that Sunday after the crucifixion, Two of his followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and walked with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, 
were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Sometimes the unexpected happens. These two people didn't set out on their walk expecting to see Jesus because they knew he died. No, they were just walking along, talking things out, trying to get their heads around everything they'd experienced. And perhaps you know, when you've just lost someone, you don't always think clearly. Perhaps they were sharing memories. Do you remember, remember when he fed all those people with just a few pieces of bread and some fishes? Perhaps they were remembering him talking about what the kingdom of God is like. But none of that can really change that feeling of helplessness we have when we know that someone has just died and in his case, brutally killed. So I guess their heads were all over the place when this stranger joined them on their journey. They couldn't believe that he didn't seem to know what had been going on in Jerusalem. So they were happy to fill him in. And sometimes talking things through really can help us to get things straight in our heads. But it seemed they only understood part of the story. So Jesus filled in the gaps. He told them they shouldn't be surprised at what had happened. After all, their scriptures had spoken about the need for a Messiah, someone who would suffer and die. And now it was being fulfilled right in front of their eyes. And as the conversation continued back in their house, as a simple meal was put on the table, as this stranger took bread and gave thanks, broke it and handed it to them, as they had seen Jesus do before, suddenly it hit them. The unexpected had happened. This was Jesus sitting with them, alive again. And as soon as they got it, they recognised him. That was enough. He vanished from their sight. And I wonder if sometimes Jesus meets us in unexpected ways. I wonder if he walks alongside us and we don't realise it's him. Perhaps like those early followers, you're going through a difficult time, loss or troubles or uncertainty, and you wonder where God is. It almost feels as if he's abandoned you. But he is still there, even if we don't recognise him at first. Maybe you can't understand how the different parts of your life, the past, the present and the future, all fit together. And then maybe somebody says something, or perhaps you read the Bible or the words of the hymn come back to you and the light dawns. Everything begins to make sense. And that's God's Holy Spirit revealing himself to you. Perhaps your life feels very mundane and predictable. But it's in that very ordinary, everyday experience that we can see that God is willing to sit and eat with us, to talk to us, to make the everyday into something sacred. So as we continue to explore Easter, let's be willing to expect the unexpected and to look for all the signs of God at work amongst us 
alongside us and within us. A prayer. Thank you, God our Father, that when you gave your Son to live on this earth, he showed us your character, your love and mercy, your forgiveness and hope. Help us to remember now that he is still always here through his Holy Spirit to help us to see more clearly. Grant us eyes to see you at work in our midst and hearts to follow you as those early disciples did. Amen. And may God bless you.